Acts of terrorism done in the name of Islam do not equate to acts condoned by Islam Part 2. Western Foreign Policy, The War on Terror, and Its Devastating Domino Effect Since the invasion of Iraq in 2003, which flouted the United Nations and international law on the pretense of weapons of mass destruction Labour Party leader, Jeremy Corbyn said. It is past time that Labour apologised to the British people for taking them into the Iraq war on the basis of deception and to the Iraqi people for the suffering we have helped cause. Under our Labour, we will make this apology. There has been a catastrophic chain reaction of events that have deformed much of the world's sociopolitical landscape. For instance, in January 2008, a poll of Iraqis confirmed that the number dead is likely to be over a million. The prestigious British polling firm, Opinion Research Business, estimated that 1,033,000 Iraqis had been killed violently since the US invasion as of August. What if we were to add to this number the causalities of Western foreign policy deployed in other Muslim countries, such as Afghanistan, Syria and Libya? This is not to say that domestic policy within these countries did not play a part in the upheaval in the Middle East. Rather, what we are saying here is that the Western foreign policy of putting out fire with fire is not just a redundant policy but an incendiary one too. Western foreign policy, which hit the Muslim world like an atomic bomb, has accounted for countless lives. The mass destruction of infrastructure and an exodus of refugees that numbers in the millions. All of the above has led to an emotional fallout of intense hatred and hostility towards the West and more specifically towards Western foreign policy. This allows opportunistic terrorist groups, like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, to tap into the emotional state of the people and exploit their hatred, fear and grief. And this is how the recruitment policy begins, both foreign and domestic. This in turn leads to attacks, like those that we witnessed in Paris, which also whips up passions of a perverted nature that are used to justify new stringent policy. Islamophobia and Emotionally Driven Militaristic Responses the most unfortunate thing about this devastating domino effect is that it is circular in its structure and thus doomed to repeat itself. All we are witnessing nowadays is a deeply embedded cycle of violence. ISIS are going to do what ISIS do best and Western leaders will respond with more bombing of the Middle East, more military intervention and more replying to violence with even greater violence. ISIS self-congratulatory press release from the established traits of the Qawaraj, from whom ISIS was spawned, is that they quote from legit Islamic sources to masquerade their vice for virtue to further their destructive agenda. And the latest PR release from ISIS makes no exception when it comes to quoting legit Islamic sources to justify the unjustifiable. They start by quoting the following verse from the Quran. He is the one who exiled the Banu and Nadir who had disbelieved in Allah and rejected his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him from their houses in al Medina, the first time towards the Levant region. They were from the Jews, the people of the Torah. After they had broken their treaty and sided with the idolaters against the messenger, he exiled them towards the Levant. O oh believers! You did not think they would leave their homes because of the might and strength they possessed? And they themselves thought that their fortresses they had fortified would protect them from the might of Allah and his punishment. Then, the might of Allah came upon them in a manner they did not anticipate, when he commanded his messenger to fight them and exile them from their homes. Allah also put extreme fear into their hearts, and they began demolishing their homes with their own hands from the inside so that the believers could not take advantage of them. While the Muslims demolished them from the outside. O oh people of insight! So take heed of what befell them due to their disbelief and do not be like them, in case you get the same requital as they did, and face the same punishment they faced. al Hasha 2. Despite the highlighted pronoun they lacking an antecedent in this verse, this doesn't mean that this verse can be arbitrarily applied to any community of people. This verse was revealed about a specific people at a specific time, and therefore its context must be taken into consideration when used to draw analogies that are acted upon. This verse is in reference to the expulsion of the Jewish tribe called Banadir which existed during the time of the Prophet in the city of Medina. This tribe had designs on breaking its peace treaty with the Prophet Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims of Medina and also conspired to murder the Prophet. In anticipation of their treachery, the Prophet Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered his forces and lay siege to them and demanded that they sign a new peace treaty to which they refused to do. Consequently, the Prophet, Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fought them until they surrendered and were subsequently granted safe passage out of Medina. 
Thus, Banu Nadia left Medina, carrying as much of their possessions as their camels could bear, including whatever they could dismantle from their houses. So with this historical context in mind, where do we even start to draw analogies between the events that unfolded in France and the incident that took place in the time of the Prophet, Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we all know that. Cast terror into their hearts is the part of the verse that ISIS cover the most because terrorism is what terrorists do. But someone needs to inform these imbeciles that casting terror into hearts is not necessarily a good thing. Especially if such hearts are innocent of any crimes against Islam and Muslims to begin with. Given that the victims of Paris were non-combatants of war then the apt verse to be quoted would be. Allah does not prohibit you from those who have not fought you on account of your Islam, and who have not expelled you from your homes. That you be good and fair to them by giving them any right they have against you. An example of this is how Asma bin Tabu Bakr al-Siddiq behaved with her disbelieving mother when she came to visit her after she had taken permission from the Prophet, peace be upon him, for this and. He instructed her to join family ties. Allah loves those who are just to themselves, their families and what they are in charge of. Allah only prohibits you from those who fought you on account of your faith, expelled you from your homes and aided in your expulsion. He prohibits you from aligning yourselves with them. Those of you who align themselves with them, they are the ones who wrong themselves by bringing them to the point of destruction on account of their going against Allah's instruction. A.I. Mumtahana 8 as we said, the Kawarij and their offshoots are notorious for quoting scripture out of context, so much so that the Prophet said, they read the Quran. Thinking it is in support of them while it is actually against them. It is one thing to distort verses, but it is another thing to distort verses that go against you. The cousin of the Prophet Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was a real example of a legitimate caliph, who ruled a legitimate caliphate, was the first to go to war with the Kawarij. The Kawarij accused him of judging by other than the Book of Allah and used this as a pretext to revolt against him. They came to Ali and paraphrased the following verse from the Quran. The command, or the judgment, is for none but Allah. The command in all creation is Allah's alone. Yusuf colon 40. Ali retorted to this slanderous accusation of theirs with the famous words, a statement of truth through which falsehood is intended. They quoted the above verse out of context, hoping to hoodwink the general masses into thinking that the truth sides with them. However, Ali was more than a match for them, both in speech and in action, because not too long afterwards, Ali and his army routed the Kawarij in battle. The cautionary tale here is that we shouldn't let their quoting of scripture blind us to their evil intentions which are evident by their evil actions. As the great Sheikh Muhammad ibn Sali al Uthaymeen said, evil intent necessitates evil understanding, which can be observed through evil actions. The blessed battle that never was blessed. The ISIS PR statement then goes on to boast the following. In a blessed battle whose causes of success were enabled by Allah, a group of believers from the soldiers of the Caliphate, may Allah strengthen and support it, set out targeting the capital of prostitution and vice, the lead carrier of the cross in Europe, Paris. The levels of sanctimoniousness and delusions of grandeur are so high that we had to take the liberty to underline certain words in the above paragraph to highlight the shared mindset that drafted up this PR statement. So helium-based are their grandiose delusions that they dedicated their success to Allah as if he were unaware of how much they have brought his religion into disrepute and how much of an avalanche of pressure they brought tumbling down on the Muslims. There is something very psychotic and disturbing about a people who take life so indiscriminately and then attribute their success to the one who has categorically forbidden the indiscriminate taking of life. So where was this blessed battle and against whom was this blessed battle fought? Let's have a look at some of these combatants of war Isis valiantly dueled with and put to the sword during this blessed battle. Hodasadi, Muslim sister. Halima Saadi, Muslim sister. Muhammad Amin Ibn al Mubarak, 29, Muslim. Elodie Breuer 23-year-old female. Elsa Veronique del Plas San Martin a 35-year-old female. Astrid Okite female. Alif Dugan 28-year-old female. Suzon Garigas 21-year-old female. Michele Gil James female. No Emi Gonzalez Garrido 29-year-old female. Angai Omar, 29-year-old female. Marie Lausch, 23-year-old female. Anna Petard Leifrig 24 year old female. Patricia San Martin Nunez 61 year old female. Fanny Minot 29 year old female. Marie Mossa 24 year old female. Justin Mulan 23 year old female. 
Helene Muyal, 35-year-old female. Aureliade Peretti, 33-year-old female. Lokrom Yoarapop, 29-year-old female. Lola Salines, 28-year-old female. Valeria Selesin, 28-year-old female. Ari Anthiela, 23-year-old female. Keeping in mind the above victims of this blessed battle, how can Isis reconcile their statement blessed battle with the tamper-proof statements of the Prophet Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam whom they absurdly claim to follow? During some of the battles of the Prophet a woman was found killed. Allah's Messenger condemned the killing of women and children. Sahek Muslim When we were with the Messenger of Allah, on an expedition, he saw some people gathered together over something. So he sent a man, saying, see what these people gathered around. He then came and said, they are round a woman who has been killed. He said, this is not one with whom fighting should have taken place. Khalid ibn al-Walid was in charge of the van, so he sent a man and said, tell Khalid not to kill a woman nor a hired servant. Sanan Abi Dawood. How can a thing be labeled as blessed when Allah and his messenger have explicitly forbidden it? Imam Ash Shawkani commented on these narrations from the Prophet, the hadith of this chapter indicate that the killing of women and children is impermissible. And this was the position of Malik and Alawzi, who held it impermissible under any circumstances whatsoever, to kill women and children, even when the enemy use women and children as shields. Once again, this just drives home the delusional and deranged mental processes of ISIS and how they flagrantly exploit Islam to justify their psychopathic tendencies. And what were these battlefields that these blessed battle were fought on? Were they fought on neutral land whereby both sides waged war without the threat of taking innocent life or the destruction of property? Here is a map that shows us where the soldiers of the Caliphate mobilized their troops against the opposing army. An observational chart on selected parts of ISIS PR statement. This group of believers were youth who divorced the worldly life and advanced towards their enemy hoping to be killed for Allah's sake, doing so in support of his religion, his prophet, blessing and peace be upon him, and his allies. ISIS delusional and self-serving rhetoric. 1. This group of believers were youth, two, who divorced the worldly life, three, and so eight brothers equipped with explosive belts, four, attacked precisely chosen targets, five, both of which are crusader nations, six, the result of the attacks was the deaths of no less than 200 crusaders, seven, they detonated their explosive belts in the masses of the disbelievers after finishing all their ammunition, eight, let France and all nations following its path know that they will continue to be at the top of the target list for the Islamic State. 9. That the scent of death will not leave their nostrils as long as they partake in the Crusader campaign. 10. And their strikes against Muslims in the lands of the Caliphate with their jets, which were of no avail to them in the filthy streets and alleys of Paris. Observations and Criticisms 1. The the car were age, in the last days, of the world, there will appear young people with foolish thoughts and ideas. Recorded by Al Bukhari. 2. From there, the Kawaraj attributes is their outward portrayal of righteousness and piety while concealing corruptive beliefs inside. So do not be deceived by their alleged asceticism and piety or by their strictness in matters, their claim that they are supporting the religion, or their allegation that they propagate Islam and make jihad. From the attributes of the Kawaraj P.3. 3. We think that the suicide missions in which a person is certain that he is going to die are haram. In fact they come under the heading of major sins, because the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said. Whoever kills himself with something in this world will be punished with it on the day of resurrection. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Uthaymeen. 4. These precisely chosen targets were cafes and restaurants and concert halls which were frequented by the innocent men, women and children. 5. Incendiary rhetoric used to remind Muslims of the days of the Crusades to justify the indiscriminate killing of innocent people. The irony here is that this murderous cult acts no different to the Crusaders all those centuries ago. 6. We are quite sure the term Crusader, requires one to crusade. How were these 129 people Crusaders? Previously, we mentioned scores of women, including Muslims' sisters, who were slaughtered indiscriminately. How can they be labeled Crusaders? 7. 
a statement that takes great pride in carrying out cowardice acts that Islam has expressly forbidden, which once again drives home ISIS cult mentality and its anti-Islamic behavior. 8. There is nothing Islamic about the state of ISIS. Their state is no different to the state of the state that Jim Jones set up in South America, Guyana, which lead to the Jonestown Massacre. 9. ISIS are using archaic rhetoric to describe a reality that is playing out in the Middle East. This doesn't prove that ISIS quest is driven by noble intentions to liberate the Muslim lands from the siege of Western foreign policy. This is nothing more than a conflict of interest. It's ISIS inherited job to kill the Muslims and it seems like Western foreign policy is interfering in what ISIS do best. However, what this does prove is that Western foreign policy can be easily used to hide ISIS real machinations. 10. And likewise, your indiscriminate killing of French citizens, which included dozens of women, was of no avail to the Muslims that reside in your non-existing caliphate. Actually, as a direct result of your calculating carnage, the French are now bombing the Muslim citizens of your non-existent caliphate. And so eight brothers equipped with explosive belts and assault rifles attacked precisely chosen targets in the center of the capital of France. These targets included the Stade de France Stadium during a soccer match between the teams of Germany and France, both of which are Crusader nations, attended by the imbecile of France, Francois Hollande. The targets included the Bataclan Theatre for exhibitions, where hundreds of pagans gathered for a concert of prostitution and vice. There were also simultaneous attacks on other targets in the 10th, 11th, and 18th districts, and elsewhere. Paris was thereby shaken beneath the Crusaders' feet, who were constricted by its streets. The result of the attacks was the deaths of no less than 200 Crusaders and the wounding of even more. All praise, grace, and favor belong to Allah. Allah blessed our brothers and granted them what they desired. They detonated their explosive belts in the masses of the disbelievers after finishing all their ammunition. We ask Allah to accept them amongst the martyrs and to allow us to follow them. Let France and all nations following its path know that they will continue to be at the top of the target list for the Islamic State and that the scent of death will not leave their nostrils as long as they partake in the Crusader campaign, as long as they dare to curse our Prophet, blessings and peace be upon him. And as long as they boast about their war against Islam in France and their strikes against Muslims in the lands of the Caliphate with their jets, which were of no avail to them in the filthy streets and alleys of Paris. Indeed, this is just the beginning. It is also a warning for any who wish to take heed.